The Battle of Berlin today marks one of the closing chapters of the Second World War, especially bringing the European theatre to an end. It saw the Red Army advancing into the city, with brutal and deadly street-to-street -street fighting taking place, with the last defenders of the German capital becoming overwhelmed. Inside a bunker complex inside the city was the Führer of Germany, its dictator Adolf Hitler, who had caused the majority of the conflict, and who has gone down in infamy as one of the most evil men to have ever walked the earth. Inside the bunker complex were Hitler's closest adjutants, who made the decision along with Hitler to stay with him until the very end and until the war was over. Many of these people were servants of the Führer and those of his staff, who demonstrated utmost loyalty to the dictator and the Nazi regime. We are all familiar with the fact that Hitler would seemingly end his life inside the bunker, and spend his last remaining moments inside the Führer bunker following a short-lived marriage to Ava Brown before he ended his own life. However, he was not the only one who died inside the complex. Today we look at who died inside Hitler's Führer bunker, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The Führer bunker itself was an air raid shelter and Hitler's last bastion inside Berlin as his city and his right crumbled around him. It was the last headquarters used by Hitler during the Second World War and he did stay here from the 16th of January 1945. It would then become the centre of the Third Reich until the war in Europe was over. The complex consisted of two different shelters, the Vol bunker being the upper bunker and then the Führer bunker which was found around 2.5 metres below the Vol bunker. Inside were around 30 small rooms, with Hitler's quarters being elaborately decorated with furniture and paintings from the Reich Chancellery. Hitler would move into the bunker on the 16th of January, and was joined by his most senior staff and closest advisers, such as Martin Bormann, Eva Braun, and later Joseph Goebbels, who would then join them in around April, along with his wife and their children. There were a number of support staff inside, including medical staff, secretaries, cooks, and the atmosphere inside the bunker was rather crowded. However, on the 16th of April, the Red Army would begin their assault on Berlin, and would encircle the city by the 19th. Hitler himself would make his last trip to the surface on his 56th birthday, on the 20th of April 1945, where he awarded military medals to children of the Hitler Youth. The situation for the Führer in his Third Reich was dire, with the Red Army arriving with their tanks, and he ordered a desperate attack by the remaining units, commanded by SS General Felix Steiner, to attack the northern flank of the Soviet army. However, on the 22nd, he was told that Steiner's forces had not moved, and with this he flew into a blind rage, openly stating for the first time that the war was lost, blaming his generals for the failure. It was then that Hitler would state he would stay in Berlin until the end, and die within his own bunker. He would obviously become the most famous person to die within the Führer bunker, the man who had dreamed of a thousand year Reich and Empire, and who was considered almost as a god to the Nazis. As the latter days of April occurred, Hitler would begin to make preparations for his demise and death. On the 27th of April, Berlin had been cut off from the rest of Germany, and Hitler would receive a report that stated that Heinrich Himmler had offered a surrender to the Allies, with the offer being declined. Hitler ordered the arrest of Himmler, ordering his representative for the SS at the Führer bunker, Hermann Fagelein, to be found and shot. On the 29th of April, shortly after midnight, Hitler would marry Eva Braun, his long-standing girlfriend, inside the Führer bunker in a small civil ceremony inside the map room, and then the two held a wedding breakfast. After this, the Führer, along with his secretary, Traudl Junger, went to a room and dictated the last will and testament of Adolf Hitler, which contained the information as what would happen after his death. Grand Admiral Karl Dönitz would become the head of state, and Goebbels would become the chancellor. These documents were signed at 4am, before he went to bed. He would then learn of the brutal fate of his friend Benito Mussolini, whose body after execution had been strung up in a marketplace, with his corpse then being mocked and abused by the crowd. Hitler did not want himself or his wife's death and bodies to be made a spectacle of, and earlier he had been given some capsules of hydrogen cyanide by Himmler, to be used in the event of Hitler taking his own life. Hitler, after hearing Himmler's betrayal, even began to consider whether the pills worked, and this brings us to our first victim of the Führer bunker. Blondie was Hitler's German shepherd, which he had been given to by Bormann as a puppy, and was around four years old. The dog was used in propaganda for portraying Hitler as an animal lover, and he remained inside the bunker. 
However, the dog was used to test the cyanide, which was given to Hitler from Himmler. To confirm that the contents of the capsule was legit, Hitler had his doctor, Werner Haas, test one of the capsules on Blondie, and for this, the dog died. Following this, Hitler allegedly broke down in tears, with his companion dead on the floor of the bunker. A report commissioned by Stalin after the war also found how one of Hitler's personal dog handlers took Blondie's pups out of the bunker and also shot them in the garden, and how Ava Brown's dogs were also killed. It was alleged that within the bunker, the death of Blondie upset more people than Ava Brown's death did. Now with confirmation of the cyanide working, Hitler and Ava Brown would live as husband and wife for less than 40 hours. He had previously heard reports that Berlin was on its knees, and at around 2.30am on the 30th of April, Hitler would appear in the corridor of the bunker to say his farewells to around 20 people, with most of them being women. He would make his way down the line, speaking to them and shaking hands with each of the staff, before heading inside his quarters. He had received reports that the defenders would soon run out of ammunition, and that the Battle of Berlin would be over in the next 24 hours, with a resounding German defeat. Helmer Fiedling, the commander in control of the Berlin defence area, had received permission by around 1pm to attempt to break out that night. Hitler then alongside his two secretaries and personal cook had lunch before he and Brown would say goodbye to further members of the bunker's staff and also his close friends Bormann, Goebbels and several secretaries. At around 2.30pm, both Hitler and Brown would head into their personal study. A short time later, a gunshot was heard and Hitler's valet Heinz Linger would open the study door to the smell of burned almonds, a sign commonly associated with cyanide poisoning. He noted how he saw the body of Hitler and Ava Brown sitting on the sofa, with Hitler's head sitting slouched to the right. Brown's corpse was on the left of the Führer, with her legs slumped away from him, and she had taken a cyanide capsule, with her body displaying no signs of bullet wounds. Hitler had shot himself with his Walter PPK pistol, and had blood dripping from his right temple, with the gun laying at his feet. His blood had begun to pool on the carpet. After this, the bodies were then gathered up, after announcements were made that the Führer was dead. His valet and another rolled Hitler's body up into a rug, and his and Ava Brown's corpses were carried up the stairs and then burned in the garden behind the Reich Chancellery. A number of witnesses would state how the top of Hitler's head and also his lower legs and feet were not covered by the rug, and initially attempts to burn the bodies did not go well. Bormann would then provide paper to help light the fire, and with this the remaining adjutants including Goebbels and Bormann would raise their arms in salute as the bodies of the Führer and his wife were burned. Following the death of Hitler, Goebbels would take up the office of Chancellor of the German Reich for just one day before he himself would take his own life inside the bunker. Even up to the dying days of the war in Europe, Goebbels was still calling on the German people to continue the fight, but inside the bunker Goebbels would become rather depressed especially after his beloved Führer's death. He would say how he walked inside the Reich Chancellery Garden in the hope that he was killed by Russian shelling. Goebbels on the 1st of May carried out his one act as Chancellor, dictating a letter addressed to General Troikov, ordering General Hans Kreb to deliver it under surrender and a white flag. It was said that on the 1st of May Goebbels was asked to leave and attempt to break out. However, he said, The captain must not leave his sinking ship. I have thought about it all, and decided to stay within the bunker. I have nowhere to go with little children, and I will not be able to make it, especially with a leg like mine. Joseph Goebbels' six children had for some time joined him inside the complex, however whilst planning his own demise, he would order the killing of his six children. He would instruct an SS dentist named Helmut Kunz to poison his six children with cyanide after he had injected them with morphine to make them unconscious. This is exactly what happened, and Kunz would later state how it was in fact Magda Goebbels, the wife of Joseph, who would administer the poison. It was reported that Hitler's personal physician had given the children some and sweetened to drink in one account, before the deadly poison was administered. It's thought that Magda Goebbels began to consider killing her children a month before, with stories of Soviet brutality on the horizon, and also that she did not want her children growing up, hearing that her father had been one of history's greatest criminals. She also believed that in a new life her children would have a better one. She did reject a number of offers by senior Nazis to remove the children out of Berlin, but they remained inside the bunker. Their bodies were found in two-tier bunk beds where they were killed, wearing the nightclothes they had worn before, and the girls had ribbons tied in their hair. 
Two days later, it would be the Soviets who found them. At around 8.30pm, Joseph Goebbels and Magda left the bunker and walked up to the garden of the Chancery above them and then killed themselves. Accounts do differ on the event, with one saying they consumed cyanide near to where Hitler was buried and burned, and then they were given a coup de grace. An SS adjutant close to Goebbels would state how the couple walked ahead of him, up the stairs and out into the garden, and he would then hear the sound of a gunshot. Once outside, their lifeless body lay in the garden. In one account, the adjutant in question ordered an SS soldier to fire a number of bullets into Goebbels' body, and then he didn't move. After this, their corpses were then covered in petrol, but were only partially burned and were not buried. It wasn't just the Hitlers and the Goebbelses who would meet their ends inside the bunker. General Hans Krebs, who was Chief of Staff and also a General of Infantry within the German Army, had remained inside the bunker and he would also perish. After the death of Goebbels, Krebs himself contemplated taking his own life and was last seen inside the bunker when the last few people attempted a breakout and escape. Krebs would say goodbye to Hitler's secretary Traudel Junger before being seen for the last time. Along with him remaining at the bunker was General Wilhelm Bergdorf. Both Krebs and Bergdorf had significant posts within the German army, but they would both die close together. In the early hours of the 2nd of May, with very little left around them, Bergdorf and Krebs would shoot themselves in the head, with their bodies later being found when the Soviets arrived at the bunker complex. There was also one more man who was inside the bunker until the very end, Franz Schadl, Hitler's last commander of his personal bodyguard, who would also on the 2nd of May 1945 shoot himself. He would shoot himself in the mouth, rather than attempt to break out from the Reich Chancellery, and he took this as a way out, as he believed he would be too slow for the breakout group, as he was walking with a crutch. So the end of the Third Reich brought about the slow deterioration of those within the Führer bunker complex. With the death of Hitler and his wife, Goebbels and his wife and children, the remaining staff and adjutants had a choice. Take the easy way out or in fact attempt a breakout, in which they could try and link up with the remaining battalions defending Berlin, and somehow with false papers or identities, pass through detection or Soviet lines. These breakouts will be the subject of a future video. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.